But we are all, all face this snake around our minds and our emotions that immobilize us called worry. Worry, it's in control of you. Worry tells you whether you're going to sleep tonight or not. Worry tells you whether you're going to have a migraine headache or not. Worry dictates to you whether you're going to stay mad and angry or not. The level of your worry reveals the size of your faith. At the center of your anxiety is your pride. The reason that you're so anxious is because you've got you at the center and you can't sustain it because it's not your throne. You can't spell anxiety without I. It's right in the middle. And you know what other word I is in the middle of? Pride. And maybe the reason that you've been carrying, carrying anxiety that you can't get rid of is because you've been bearing weight that you weren't meant to bear. Here's our problem. We have confused the necessities of life with the extras of life. We have confused what God promises to me and what we want him to do. We have transferred needs into wants and then get mad at God because he's not meeting our needs uh, that really are not the needs, they're the wants. So we become like the Gentiles and we seek it, which means we go break our necks, we work overtime, we're doing 10 jobs, we can't come to church because we're too tired from working six days or we got to work seven days and we become like the heathen, breaking our necks for stuff God said I would take care of if you had them in the right priority. So Peter says this is a time for resistance. This is not a time for you to run. This is a time for you to resist. Yeah, but he's a lion. Okay, he is a lion. And he might be licking his lips. And his fangs might be sharp. And he might have you in his sight. And you might have failed and you might have done it and you might be going down. But you need to know one thing about this lion, Peter says, is that after you have suffered a little while, God himself will step in and restore you and make you strong. Your real enemy is not another person. Your real enemy is not even a situation. Because if you don't know this, you'll spend your whole life fighting the wrong things. God says, let me tell you what to fight. Fight your fear. Let me tell you what to fight. Fight your discouragement. If you can fight discouragement, you can fulfill your destiny. Don't give up because you've drifted into a storm. Whatever storm you found yourself in today, you didn't obey God, it didn't happen, you decided it doesn't matter. Don't give up because you're drifted into a storm. Today God wants you to know that he sees you in the storm and he wants you to understand that he will give provision in the storm. He will help you in the storm. If you decided or you drifted, don't give up. How can you tell me not to feel afraid and not to feel discouraged? But God didn't say don't feel afraid. And he didn't say don't feel discouraged. I think the essence of what God wants to say to you is just because you feel afraid doesn't mean you have to be afraid. Just because you feel discouraged doesn't mean you have to be discouraged. Just because you have fear doesn't mean fear has to have you. When are people going to stop worrying? And here's what I've learned. I can stand here and tell you that I'm blue in the face not to worry, but you know what? You're going to worry until you finally realize that it's useless. It doesn't help your problem, doesn't solve your problem. All it is is us saying, I think if I think about this long enough and worry about it long enough, I can figure something out. All you have to do when you're worried is just think about something else. Go get your mind on something else. Get your mind on something good and just say out loud, this is not going to help me. It's not going to do me any good. It's useless. It's a waste of time. How many of you believe that you're more valuable to God than a bird? You believe that you're more valuable to God than a bird? Well, we know what Matthew 6 says. Look at the birds. 
They don't worry. They're not frustrated. They're not concerned about anything, and yet God keeps feeding them. Are you not worth much more <laughs> than a bird? Why waste your time worrying about something that's going on in your life today? Because tomorrow you're going to have something new that you can think about. He can heal us of depression. He can heal us of anxiety. But here's his number one method of healing us from anxiety and depression, and that is perspective. Focusing on what we have, what we have, what we have, what we have. Start focusing on what you have, what you have, what you have, what you have, what you have. You will become thankful, which creates happiness. Gratitude is the parent of happiness. Gratitude is the parent. Happiness is the child. Gratitude is the parent that gives birth to the child. We all have times when we're discouraged, but the answer is to then find a way to be encouraged. Just like light always overcomes darkness, positive things always overcome negative things. We need to grow up enough to realize that we can't just keep asking God to do everything for us. We can't ask him to deliver us from the problem that we keep feeding. If you want to be happy or successful, you got to ask God for it. Most people don't have the life of their dreams because you don't ask God for it. The scripture says you have not because you ask not. Your whole Success is tied in your relationship to God. You can simplify this by getting in touch with your creator. That's your key, man. Faith don't make it easy. Faith makes it possible. All you want is the strength to get through your life. You know, I've been going through a lot lately. Somebody sent me a plaque. You know what it said? It said, on the days that I feel like I'm not going to make it, on the days that it feels like I can't endure anymore, I think back on my track record for surviving all my bad days. And so far, surviving all my bad days, my track record is 100%.